I just want to say this is a great conference. I'm going to speak in English because we prepared these comments in English. It would have been much better to speak the language I grew up speaking, but you know how it is. I want to share with you a set of ideas about the role of technological innovation in reducing inequality that go beyond specific programs. A lot of the discussion today has been about those specific programs. But I want to talk about structural capabilities which will inevitably unleash innovation in education, healthcare, and countless other fields. I want to speak to the power specifically of two technological transformations. The decentralization of communications capabilities and the parallel decentralization of power generation. You know, across my career in two decades at McKinsey and more than half a decade as president of the Ford Foundation and now in a broad range of work as a technology investor and advisor to global development organizations, I've seen the capacity of technological innovation to create capabilities for change we could not have imagined before they were put in front of us. In short, technology is taking us into an era in which the capacity to transform the lives of the poorest for the better will grow exponentially. Barriers to communication and power supply will vanish, are vanishing, enabling educational opportunities, health access, and economic growth in unprecedented ways. Let me just look forward by briefly looking back. Not long ago, bringing even basic voice services to some rural areas was considered unaffordable. We can't get there because there is a river. We can't get there because there's a forest. Today, you can find wi wireless services in rural villages and the Andean Highlands. Literally, there's wireless service in places where there isn't even running water. The wait for a phone is denominated in hours, not in years. Remember when Buenos Aires, if you wanted a phone in Buenos Aires or Mexico City, it took you a year, you signed up, and a year later, maybe they came? Well, it's hours now, and the cost reflects the race to zero technology companies are engaged in. Phone service used to require large-scale infrastructure with expensive and vulnerable choke points. All that's changed. We now live in a world where that centralization and those choke points no longer exist and profound connectivity is readily available. Wireless networks, and I've been to all these places like many of you have, extend deep into rural Kenya. The Andean highlands, remote islands in Indonesia have wireless networks. And the devices to access those networks are not only ubiquitous, but they're also cheap. An iPhone 6 that you might buy today costs you $600. But an iPhone 4, a marvel just 48 months ago, remember, an iPhone 4 48 months ago, is now available by the hundreds of millions used for as little as $10. That revolution from centralized to decentralized, from asset heavy to less heavy, is now extending to electrification. Like communications, electricity is about to become vastly easier to bring to rural and low-income communities. And the revolution starts with solar power, small portable panels producing enough electricity to provide basic energy, light at night, the power to charge a cellular phone. Now, remember, 30% of Latin America's rural population lives without electricity. Just like mobile phones in the 90s, it is only a matter of time before every village has some source of power. Let me be clear. This is no pipe dream. You can order, even on Amazon, for $100, a mobile device, laptops more powerful, rather, cell phones more powerful than laptops, the electricity to power that device through uh, small devices, small portable mobile devices, and anything else. Infinite frictionless communications and the distributed power required to make it work are a reality today, and with good policy can be ubiquitous tomorrow. Programs are fabulous. The platform on which those programs can ride is available to all of us for $100 a household. What does this mean? A child given unlimited access to nearly every book. Uh, helping a parent deal with medical issues through remote information. All these things exist. We've seen them and much more. What I find most exciting 
are things that not even have been invented yet. Right now, the governments of Peru and Indonesia are holding a conference about how, just a second, how they're uh, using mobile devices to create cash payments, bringing together the processing power of nearly free advanced mobile devices and solar power, the solar power required to run them. Putting those capabilities in the hands of the poorest has the capacity to bring even the most rural poor into the world of opportunity we live in. Programs are great, but these platforms have to be developed and they can be developed cheaply. Thank you.